it doesn't make any sense from an eternal perspective that they were already with him because then it's just no longer eternal. See, people get confused with this, and, I, and I'm trying not to make it confusing for you. The concept of balancing between eternal and temporal. Because once something, if something's eternal, it's always eternal. It has to be. Otherwise, it's not eternal, right? If something is forever, it has to be forever because if it stops or it, it, there's a segment missing and you are here, eternal now, now you're not, now you are, it's not eternal at all. You can't have a gap and have it be not ending. Does that make sense? Am I, am I making it clear for everyone here? Because eternal, by definition, has to be forever. You, you can't have now I'm saved, now I'm not, or you know, I had eternal life and, and now I don't because I've, I've gotten, gotten away from the commandments of God. Now I'm going to come back and get, be back in eternal life. It doesn't work that way. It's not, it's not the way that it works for eternal forgiveness. This has to be referring to, again, this temporal forgiveness. That's why he says return backsliding. You're sliding back. It means you had made it forward. And now you start going backwards in your spiritual life, in your walk with God. He's saying, come back. And we all are going to face times like this. It's going to happen where you start backsliding. When you're not doing, hey, if you're not doing as much spiritually for God that you have been before, you're backslidden. If you go out soul winning and you're soul winning every week and you're reading your Bible every day and you're praying every day and this is how you're living your life. And then you find yourself, well, I'm praying most of the time. I'm reading my Bible every other day and I go soul winning about once a month. You're backslidden. Now, you may still all be doing a lot of good things, right? Those are all good things to do. But You've already backslidden because you were doing more before. Does that make sense? You're sliding back. And, you're, you know, and it's just a matter of time. Where are you going to end up drawing the line? See, the problem is it's a heart problem more than anything else. Because the more you start letting all that stuff slip, what you're doing is you're putting other things before God. You're putting all those other things first in your life. And that's just going to keep leading you down that path. And what God's saying here is, hey, before I even get like, angry with you, before anything happens, just, just come back to me. Get your heart back right with me. I'm merciful. I'm long-suffering. I don't want you to continue backsliding and going down that path to the point to where I'm just going to have to get angry about it and, and bring down the, the, the rod on your rear to get you back right with me. It's much better if we could just do this easily and you can get right with me. And this is, and this is the teaching that he's giving. Return Thou backsliding Israel. He says, I won't cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord. I will not keep my anger forever, forever. Verse 13, but here's what he requires. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. Admit that you've done wrong, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. He's saying, I, I want your hearts. I want your hearts right with me. I'll give you good things. I'll give you good teachers. I'll give people to look out for you. But I, bring your heart back to me. 